Bonds Payable Basics Problem 2. Mellon Company issues $1,007,000 of its 14% 10-year bonds at 99 on February 28th, year 1. The bonds pay interest on February 28th and August 31st. Assume that Mellon uses the straight line method for amortization. What net amount will be reported for the bonds on the August 31st year one balance sheet? We've got bonds here. What is the net amount that will be reported for bonds on the August 31st year one balance sheet? And we're told in the question about the million dollar, it issues one million, sorry, one million seven thousand dollars of bonds, 14%, uh, 10 year bonds at 99. And the bonds pay interest at a certain amount. So we need to find the net amount that's reported on the balance sheet. Now think about the balance sheet, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. When we have bonds, when we're issuing bonds, so Mellon Company, which is what we're looking at, issues bonds. The issuing company, when it issues bonds, those go under the liabilities. So we have bonds payable. Now bonds payable, the way that we report that is if we're asked the net amount, not the face amount, the net amount, that means that we're going to have to take bonds payable, BP, minus a discount, if we have a discount, or plus a premium, if we have a premium out there. And we also amortize, and this is, gives us the net carrying amount of bonds, or just called the net bonds payable, whatever you want to refer to it. You'll see it either way, carrying amount, bond carrying amount, either one, um, also known as the carrying amount. Now students, first time you deal with discounts it can and, and premiums can be challenging. This question does have um, a discount involved and I'll mention premiums later on. And the way you know it's a discount is when you're told the bond, if it's issued at par, so if it's 10 year bonds issued at par, that means it's issued for, it's issued for face value. It's issued at 100, 100%. If it's less than 100, which here we have 99, it's issued at a discount. If it's issued more than 100, it's a premium. Now, the idea has to do with the market rate of interest as well versus the interest rate that this pays. So if this pays a discount, um, I'm sorry, if this is issued at a discount, that means that the interest rate is going to be less than the market rate of interest at the time it was issued. If it's issued at a premium, that means that the um, bond's um, interest rate is more than the market rate. So the markets adjust for things. That's the idea. So here, we're just asked to calculate the net amount. The first thing you want to always do is you want to take the face value, which here is $1,007,000, and multiply it by, again, the 99, 103, whatever it is. Here it's 99, and that's percentage, so 0.99. We're going to multiply that number. When we multiply that number, we're going to get 996930 $930. Now, that amount is the carrying amount of bonds when it's issued, when it's issued. And the bonds were issued on February 28th, year one. So again, the way we calculate the carrying amount or the net amount, like it's asking here, is we take, if you have a discount, which we do here, right? Because again, it's under 100. If it was over 100, it would be a premium. And again, usually you're not told 100, you'd say, it'd be, it would say issued at par. That's how you know 100. But if there's a discount premium in the question, you will see the, the amount, 99, 103, those types of, that type of thing, 84, you know, whatever it is. At issuance, you take the bond, you take the um, the face value, which is the face amount, which is $1,007,000, multiply it by the percentage, 99. If it was 103, you multiply it by 1.03, and you get the carrying amount at issuance. But this is not an issuance. This is on August 31st, year one. This, there's been six months that have passed, right? It was issued on February 28th. So March, April, May, June, July, August, six months have passed. Six months have passed. Now you're saying, okay, well, no, no amount's been paid off. I mean, yeah, interest has been paid. So does that mean that it's just going to be the same amount? No. And the reason why is because we amortize the discount and premium over time. Now, this question, we're told the company uses a straight line method for amortization. There's the effective method, which that's much more challenging. Straight line method is much more simple because you do the same amount over the life. 
the idea of the effective method is it's more economical. If for those of you out there who purchased a house or maybe purchased a car, when you purchase your house or car and you're making payments on the house or car, if you look at your your mortgage payments, you look at your car payments, you'll see that early on you're making much larger interest payments than you are later on. It kind of like flips. The idea there is that it's more of a, okay, early on economically, you're it's the more the borrowing the money and you have a higher amount of interest and then it flips. Economically, it flips. It's not the same amount of interest over time. It's not, it doesn't stay the same over time. So that that's what's going on, okay? We're using the straight line method. We calculate our our bond carrying amount at issuance. So at issuance of the bonds for Mellon, it's $996,930. But now we're doing it for August 31st, year one, so after six months. Now again, it's still gonna be the, the bond payable face amount. So we always use the face amount when we're doing the um, carrying amount, the net amount. So it's still gonna be $1,000,000. $7,000. Now, again, remember, we always subtract away a discount or we add a premium. Now, the amortization of discounts and premiums is the same. So if I told you this was a premium, 103, with these numbers, you would still do this the same way that I'm about to do, the amortization calculation. You would still do this the same. You would just add the premium after that date, not subtract away like we're going to do with the discount. So just keep that in mind. The amortization calculation is going to be the same. All right, so how we calculate the amortization of the discount. To calculate the discount at issuance, there's two ways you could do this. We could take $1,007,000 and we could subtract it away from 996930 and you get the discount, the original discount. You could do that. If you want to do that, that's fine. At issuance. You could subtract away the two numbers. That's what most people do. I like to just take, you know, if we're using 99, if we're using the 99%, you could also take the $1,007,000 and use the other percentage, the 1%, right, which is the 100 minus the 99 that we're given. And you could calculate the discount that way. And that equals 10000 Seven dollars. That's one percent. You could subtract the two one million seven thousand dollars from nine hundred ninety six thousand nine thirty. You get ten thousand seven, or you could just multiply the percentage. I know there's a little bit of um, of rounding in there, but you get the idea. It's it's very it's a very similar amount. Now we have that amount. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to subtract away the amortized portion over the life of the respective amount. We're going to subtract it away. So that is the $10,007. That is what the discount is when you initially start. And a discount is going to reduce over time. It's going to go down. The premium will also reduce. And the way we're going to do this is we look at, at the date. At the date that, at question, which it's been six months, and we could draw out a timeline if we want. This is a 10-year bond. It's got 10 years. But even within the one year period, for example, and there's going to be 10, right? 10 different ones. There's broken into semi-annual, right? It's semi-annual payments. So really, if there's 10 years and it's paid twice a year, there's 20. So that means every time a payment takes place, which this is a six month period, this February 28th to August 31st is six months, which is, again, a period of 20 payments. We're going to amortize the discount over that time. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to take the $10,007 and we're going to subtract away from that the amount of amortization that's taking place, which is going to be the same. So we're going to subtract away the amortized amount, which is straight line. So it's the same $10,007 discount. And we're going to divide that amount by 20 payments, by 20 payments. And when we subtract that away, we're going to get a new discount at the end of this payment, August 31st, of $9,567. Again, the 20 comes from the 20 payments, 10 years times semi-annual, the 20 payments, so $9,567. So we take our bond payable of $1,007,000, that's the face amount, we subtract away 
the $9,567 discount and we get our end answer of 997,433. So if we went to the next year and we went to February 28th year two, we would do the $9,567, the updated um, discount account. So we keep continually rolling it over. It's a, um, it's on the balance sheet. It goes under bonds payable. And then we do, again, we subtract away $10,007 divided by 20, that, that um, quotient, and we get then we get the new amount and then you subtract that from discount. And eventually after the end of the 10 years, the discount will go to zero. And then when the company collects, I'm sorry, when the company pays off, Mellon, when it pays off what it owes, there's no more discount. So it will easily wipe everything off the books when it's paid off. If it's a premium, again, we add to it, but it's the same way. We just amortize it over the time of the, over the life of the payments that are, that, that take place. So that would be the only discount is that if this was a premium, we would just add it. We'd take the $1,007,000 and we'd add the 9,567. The amortization calculation straight line would be the same way. So with that, make sure you go ahead and you practice it. Practice it with a uh, premium as well. Again, only thing that changes is you add to it.